Hi everyone, today's candle review, feedback, and helpful tips video is for a company called Depress Me Not. I will have that information in the description below. Let's go ahead and get into it. Welcome back, and if you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is Wade here with Black Tie Barn. If this is the first review you have seen, basically how it works is you subscribers and viewers, other fellow candle makers here in the community, um, can reach out to me. You can send me in some of your candles for helpful feedback, review, kind of I'll test them out, let you know what I think, and maybe offer any tips and tricks that I might have. But as I've mentioned several times in each one of these videos, I'm not the end-all be-all expert when it comes to candle making, but I am just here to offer any potential helpful feedback that I may have. And it seems like all of you really do like these type of videos. So if this does interest you and you're interested in any other candle review videos or any other videos about making and selling candles, then I would encourage you to subscribe below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's candles. All right, first we got a couple letters. I'm going to go ahead and get everything out and then uh, and then we'll talk talk about all the products. Okay, the first thing I got to say though is inside um, the main box with some packing peanuts is another box. So this is perfect. This is the double box method. Um, I uh, really highly recommend this method, um, especially if you don't have a lot of room in the box to really add a lot of extra packing peanuts. If you don't, Putting another box inside of a box is the safest way to go. Let me talk about these envelopes here. So for those of you that have seen a lot of these reviews before, this is pretty common. Uh, we've got two envelopes, one that says open me first, and then one that says open me last. Now, the reason there's two, if you've never seen one of these reviews before is, as you guys know, I do like to try to speculate and make some guesses on what type of materials that uh, that the candles are working with. So that could be the wax type or the wick types and wick sizes. Sometimes the fragrance oils, although that's almost impossible to really dial in specifically, but I can describe them. But basically, it's just another fun little thing to add to these videos, making some guesses. And then at the end, after I've tested them um, on the video, I will open this one and let you know how close I was on those guesses. So it's, it, it's just a little extra fun. I'm going to go ahead and open the first one first. And I'm going to set the open last one off to the side and we'll worry about it uh, actually here later on after I tested these candles. So I'm going to quickly read this first and then I will summarize it for you, sharing whatever information is, is okay to share. Okay, so the owner's name of Depress Me Not is Davina. I think, I, hopefully I'm saying that right, but it's Davina, I believe, D-I-V-I-N-A. And uh, the, she did say that I could share a lot of this information in here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight a few important points. First is that the simple premise behind her business is that each candle has a corresponding coping mechanism, which allows customers to pick candles that kind of resonate with them, resonate with some kind of feel good moment. Um, that could be something from exercising to take a bath to spending time with their pets and so on. And she says her customers are loving that extra personal touch. In fact, she goes as far as allowing customization and personalization for kind of feel good gifts for either themselves or for someone else. Lighting a candle and just doing something that makes you happy. So great job with that. I love the fact that you have a focus for your products. So let's go ahead and open up this box. So we got the box open here and right on top, the first thing we have is a cute little square business card. The next thing you see under the box is the candle care card. Very, very popular, very, very common these days, uh, not to just have warning labels, but to send care cards. I actually don't send a lot of separate care cards at this time. I, I use information on my warning labels, then of course you can find it on my website, but I am going to probably start doing this as well, really for no other reason other than that I just, I just want to. Uh, but this is something that's getting very common and I think it's a great touch. And I also love, by the way, the caricature that I've already seen, I, I'm assuming I'm assuming this is supposed to represent uh, Davina and uh, and she's got different expressions. Um, so this is really, really fun. Uh, the caricature on the front of this one. And then on the other side, she's got kind of a different personality, having a little fun. So I, I really enjoy that. Other than that, I'm not going to go through the details, but this is a standard care card, uh, which also does include a little discount promo card on their next purchase. Now we are to the candles. And let me say, uh, I have zero concerns about your packaging. I think this is excellent, uh, not just for presentation, but also for the safety of your products. Like I said before, you've got a box and a box, both had packing peanuts, and then your candles are secured in this inner box. So we've got two different candles here. Let's go ahead and get them out of the individual bubble wrap. Oh, oh, we got another little note on these. One says, hi, please open this one first. <laughs> and then the other one says, open me last. We're going to do as we are told. All right. Okay. A couple, a couple things stand out right off the bat for me. And I don't think you'll be able to appreciate this through camera. Um, and I'll explain why here in a second, but let me go ahead and show you first. Maybe with the light reflecting off, you'll be able to see what I'm referring to here. 
but this is a textured, almost kind of um, linen type of label. Uh, I, 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 it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of what it's actually called. Uh, it's almost like a satin velvety, well, velvet, that's not it. It's almost like a satin textured kind of linen paper. It's really hard to describe, but it feels amazing. And it looks amazing too. You get absolutely no gloss and glare. Oh man, this is a great label. Great, I love it. Now, the other thing that stands out for me is the caricatures. Really, really love your concept and your branding here. It is fun, it's lighthearted, it's uh, whimsical, uh, it's playful. I mean, you you are 100% right. If your goal is to help with people suffering from down times and depression, and you're just finding a way to add some light back to people's lives, and uh, just as a pick-me-up, you have perfect branding to do that. Perfect, because it is fun and it is playful and it makes you just smile. And I think that was your entire goal. So excellent job so far. This one is called Nurses Are Angels in Scrubs. It says a luxury coconut apricot cream scented candle. So the only coconut and apricot cream that I'm aware of um, that I've ever seen or used before is from Wood & Wick Company. So that doesn't mean that's where it's at. It's just the only one I'm really familiar with. So this is an eight and a half ounce candle. I love the smoky gray jar and the wood lid, and they even have their logo on the lid. Loving this so far. Let's go ahead and open up. Ooh, this smells great. Now, one thing I'll say is I didn't notice any kind of fragrance listed on the label. Sometimes people don't put the specific notes and profiles. They put uh, the name of whatever they want on the label, and sometimes on the website they'll maybe describe what that is, but that doesn't necessarily have to be on the label. You can call your candles and your fragrances whatever you want. To me, this smells like a lemon. I'm smelling mostly a lemon and uh, maybe even a little bit of sage or something, but lemongrass is mostly what I'm picking up here. You might notice that there is a little bit of an embed dried herbs here. And that looks like lavender. I'm not sure what, what that is. But anyways, I, I'm smelling mostly lemongrass and it smells amazing. Now, a couple things here, these dried herbs I've talked about before. I'm not a huge fan of putting flowers and herbs and things in my candles for safety reasons more than anything. But the main point about that in general is just you always need to do adequate testing. My two, the two things that I would say are most important is test, 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 and then make sure your insurance will cover it. If you do both of those things, then I think you are in a much better position than someone that just adds things to their candles doesn't really know how it's gonna perform and doesn't know if they're protected legally. But outside of that, it looks gorgeous and it smells amazing. As I mentioned before, I know of a coconut apricot cream wax, but I don't actually use it myself. So I don't know how this is gonna burn. It's very soft, it's, uh, it's kind of greasy, which is very common for coconut waxes and probably apricot, I would imagine as well. Apricot, apricot, whatever. And it does have a wood wick in it. Um, and let's talk about that real quick. So it's definitely a booster wick. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. So it is a booster wick, which you can identify by the smaller wick attached to the larger wick. Um, and you usually will do that with organic waxes or high melt point waxes or any kind of combination of waxes and oils that just need an extra boost of flame, an extra kick. Uh, and so these booster flames will generally burn hotter. As far as the specific size, if these wicks are from wood wick, I would have to guess that this is a 0 0.02 booster wick. It could be a 0 0.03, but I don't, but I don't, I don't think so. I think it's a 0 0.02 booster wick and the width I would say is probably a half inch, maybe five eighths. If I had to guess, I'd probably go with a half inch. That's close. Let's move on to the next one. Open me last. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh my God, that's, <laughs> this is so funny. Okay, did you guys see it yet? <laughs> Oh, uh, she put a picture of me on her label. I make candles. What's your superpower is the name of this candle. That's freaking awesome. Now, some of you might recognize this person. I mean, okay, it's me, but it's my alter ego some, from some of my other previous videos. This is Alan. <laughs> so if you haven't seen my videos before, uh, go back and check out some of the other ones. A Alan is, is one of my fun characters on the show here. I'd like to incorporate him more than I do, but... To be honest, it takes a lot of editing work. It's it's kind of hard, but so I do it when I get, when I have time. But <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I love the positive vibes from both these candles. I love the caricatures. I love your branding. No offense to anyone else, but this is now my favorite label ever because I would have never thought in a million years when I decided to randomly introduce an alter ego on the show or uh, on this channel that he would end up on a label. So 
Alan is now more famous than me. <laughs> well, that's a floral. Huh. I love florals, but sometimes they're really hard to tell what you're smelling. Because a lot most florals have combinations of florals in them. I feel like I'm smelling a little bit of grass, like fresh cut grass type of fragrance, but that's kind of a safe answer because like almost all florals have that in it. <laughs> they're a little earthy, right? By the look of the dried flowers in here, I'm I don't know, is that dandelion? Grass and lilac? I don't know. I'm kind of tulips. I'm just okay. I'm just throwing out things and hoping they stick now. I have no idea what's in this fragrance. Other than there's some grass. This smells like I'm walking through a uh, like a meadow full of different wildflowers. Now, <laughs> in honor of Alan, he would probably describe this as, yeah, yeah, man, like a, it's almost like a face full of flowers. He'd probably say something like that. Oh, and uh, as far as the wick goes on this one, same thing. Uh, looks like about a half inch .02 booster wick from Wooden Wick Company would be my, would be my guess. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about my general thoughts on these. Uh, first of all, I love the labels. I love your brand. I love everything you're going for and everything you are about. I mean, I just I think you just nailed what you're going for. So spot on with that. I am intrigued by the wax choice because I haven't had enough time to really test this wax up myself. So I'm really curious how they're going to burn. And then your little dried embeds. I, I don't hate them. I, I don't typically like the dried flowers and herbs on candles for the reasons I talked about earlier. But again, if you can do it safely um, and then they look this simple and and almost embedded perfectly, it's hard to it's hard to not to like, right? And they look great. Regardless of anything else, they look great. They smell great. Now, I know some people might say, including you as the maker, um, you know, might not like some of the wet spots and things that show up on these frosted glasses. I don't even know if the candle, if the camera is going to pick it up that well. But you know what? I don't think it's a big deal. I really just don't. Uh, it, I'm assuming this coconut apricot wax is a pretty soft wax, but you know, with most waxes, when it comes to temperature changes, they contract and expand, contract and expand, and you're going to get some wet spots and it's not going to be perfect. Um, you're going to see some noticeable jar adhesion issues occasionally with almost all but a few waxes out there. So I almost forgot to mention it because I don't think about it. Even as a candle maker, it just doesn't bother me that much. So I, lo I love the look of these candles. I really do. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to try these out and to test them. So one last note before I test these is because of your branding and they're fun and whimsical, I would almost consider as you kind of grow and expand and can afford the extra expense, is uh, to getting your own product boxes for these because they are very highly marketable. And anything that's highly marketable, if you can expand on the presentation a little bit, I think that would really help you out. It's kind of a fun, whimsical character style box, product box that kind of goes this, along the same lines of your label. <laughs> That would be awesome. That'd be a great touch. So something to think about for the future. So what I'm going to do now is step away and test these candles for several days. But this video is going to cut fast forward to the end of that testing. So I can let you know exactly how it went all in one video. So don't go anywhere because the next few minutes of this video will be me talking about the feedback and showing you the testing of these candles and offering any little tips that I might have. So I'll be right back. Well, that was fun. That was a fun test, really for a couple reasons. Uh, for starters, the this particular wax and wood wick combination is not a combination I've tested or used that often myself, but also just because of the labels and the jars, it was just a lot of fun. In fact, while I was testing, I had a couple family members come in and uh, and a friend of mine actually, and they, they saw one of these candles um, and looked really closely at it for a few seconds and then looked back up to me and said, is that your face on a candle? <laughs> yes. Why, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was a good time, especially trying to explain why my face was on one of these candles. But anyways, let's talk about how these uh, two candles burned. So overall, both fragrances were awesome. I really, really enjoyed them both as I thought I would. Um, I did end up having a favorite of the two. Um, and one of them burned a little bit better than the others. And we're going to talk about some tips uh, potentially to help out one of them going forward. Let's go ahead and start with the candle with my or, um, Alan's face on it. First of all, this was the one that I, I guessed was some kind of wildflowers or, or meadows type of fragrance oil. It seemed to have a lot of different florals going on it and I couldn't really identify a specific one. Uh, it just seemed like a, a meadow of wildflowers to me. And I, I, and I really, really love this fragrance. It was excellent cold throw. It had superior hot throw and I just, liked the fragrance itself regardless. So it was a really, really good candle. I really don't have a ton to say about this one because it actually burned almost perfectly. Um, you know, wood wicks can be a little inconsistent, so it's hard to say it burned perfectly because one candle might burn perfect, the next candle, even though it's from the same batch, might burn a touch differently just because wood wicks, they, are, they can be a little finicky sometimes. 
But the one thing I'll talk about, and you'll see in some of this footage here, is it did get a little bit of a, of a long stock on it that as it burned down further than the candle. The woodwicks did get kind of high, and unless your customers are trimming those off, which of course they should be, but they don't always do that, um, this woodwick did get a little bit of a stock on it after a few burns, but that's totally normal as long as the candle can turn, continues to burn safely and, uh, and effectively. And it's also worth noting that these woodwicks were booster wicks, meaning they had the extra piece of wood in the middle of it. Uh, to kind of give it a little bit extra fuel to the flame. And those wicks do tend to consume wax a little bit faster than non-booster wicks. And so it is more common to burn that wax down faster and end up with more of the wood wick sticking above the wax while it's burning. So pretty common, uh, definitely no issues here. It burned perfectly and never became unsafe. And it just, it was great from start to finish. The fragrance, the hot throw was great the entire time. It burned really, really good the whole time. You'll notice in some of the footage that even when the stock got kind of, kind of tall and the flames kind of got higher than what you would like, that was from the result of not trimming it every single time because I like to see what would happen with the power burn. And it still was safe. Even though the, the flame got fairly tall, it was still safe because it was centered perfectly and never got near the side walls. And it just did a really good job. I was also impressed that this particular wax, this uh, coconut apricot cream wax, didn't get any kind of discoloration from using the wood wicks. A lot of waxes will do that. Um, once they've been burned and I didn't see any ashes and I didn't see any discoloration on the wax itself. So great job with this candle overall. The wicking was spot on. The fragrance was excellent. Of course, the label, I mean, the label was awesome. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the other one. Now, this other candle was the Nurses Are in Scrubs candle. My guess on this one was that it was some type of lemongrass fragrance, maybe something else in there as well, but mostly kind of a lemon, uh, maybe a little bit of orange or sage or something else in there as well. But uh, I really love the fragrance. It didn't have as much of a hot throw as the other one, but that's mostly for the wicking, which is what we're gonna talk about here in a sec. But once again, before we get into that, this did not have any residue or discoloration from the woodwick. So I think this wax just behaves pretty good with woodwick so far, at least in my short experience. Um, and again, the, the fragrance was excellent on this one. The one tip I would give on this one, and you'll see a little bit in the footage here, is the first burn was pretty good, but you could tell that towards the end of that first burn, it, it maybe was gonna be a little bit under wicked. The wood wick was having a little bit of a hard time um, consuming the wax and staying lit really well. I mean, it was staying lit, it never like died out, but it was just a really weak flame. But sometimes with wood wicks, as I mentioned before, they can be inconsistent, even from burn to burn. So I gave it a few more chances and you'll see again that it did start to tunnel just a little bit. And, and I shouldn't say even tunnel, it was never really tunneling. It just wasn't reaching the edges all the way, um, which you don't need to early on, but it really struggled to for pretty much the entirety of the candle. It was leaving some on both sides, mostly because this wick just seemed to be a little under wicked for this particular fragrance maybe in this jar with this wax. It just wasn't strong enough. I don't think it had enough heat from the flame. So my particular suggestion on this one would be either to keep the width that you have, but go from a, I, I, I believe I guessed you were using a 0 0.02 or a 0 0.03 thickness on your wick. Whatever one you're using, I would either bump that up and then keep everything else the same or keep what you have, but maybe extend the width another quarter inch. So if these are half inches, take them to five eighths inch and then try and see if that does it, does any better. It's, it's hard to know, obviously don't use this hot combination a lot myself. So without testing it, I'm just speculating, but uh, it definitely needs a little bit more. Um, and it's just which direction you wanna go, either with widening the wick or getting a thicker wick um, is completely up to you. But I would certainly stick with a booster wick on this type of wax, because uh, it did a good job on the other candle. I just, I just think this one could benefit from wicking up in some fashion or another. But I have to say, all in all, my favorite thing about this review is your positivity and your focus on you know good feelings and good vibes. You did a really good job there. I love the fun, playful labels as well as the fun, playful packaging. And of course, as I mentioned before, I loved the fragrances on both. I, if I had to pick a favorite out of these two, it was definitely the uh, I Make Your Candles, What's Your Superpower one, the orange one, the one that had Allen on it. So I'm gonna be really curious to find out what that is. In fact, let's go ahead and get to that point. So we have our open last letter and we're gonna open that now and Maybe, geez. Let's see what we're working with here. Okay, so we've got the letter here uh, from Davina and she says, well, first of all, hi Wade, sorry, I know my candles are not perfect. It has some wet spots and too late for me to make new ones. <laughs> well, first of all, either are mine. None of our candles are perfect. That's why we're always trying to improve them. We all have, we can make really, really good candles, but 
we're always trying to find ways to improve them. And, and as far as the wet spots go, I don't I don't care. We talked about this in the first part of the video. Yeah, you see some minor jar adhesion issues on these, but even if they were perfect before you sent them to me, by the time they made it to me, shipping through climate and weather changes, it may have all been for naught anyway. So I don't focus on wet spots. And I, I try to encourage other candle makers not to focus on it too much either. I know it matters to us and we like things to look kind of pristine at first, but Man, and, and, with the exception of a few axes out there, it's just a, it's just a constant battle. You can't control it forever. So I encourage everyone not to overstress about things like wet spots and jar adhesion. In my opinion, the focus should be on creating a good smelling and good performing candle. So as far as some of the details, the wax type, as we know, is the coconut apricot cream. Uh, she doesn't say where that comes from, but I still have a hunch it's from Wooden Wick Company, but I'll let her confirm that if she wants to in the comments. As far as the wicks, she is using the Crackling Booster Wick 0 0.02 from Wooden Wick Company. So that is what I said I thought it was in the beginning of the video. Just looking at the uh, thickness, it looked like a 0 0.02. Clearly, you can recognize a booster wick. Um, and, I, and she didn't say the width on them, but they both look like half inch width to me. As far as the fragrance oils go, the uh, the angels or the nurses are angels and scrubs fragrance oil is citrus agave and lavender. Yeah, I think that was pretty close to my guess. I think I said uh, lemongrass and lavender with maybe a touch of orange. So citrus agave, lavender. I'd say that was a pretty good guess. Pretty close. And then the one that has my or Alan's photo on it is uh, Georgia peach from Flaming Candles. Wow, I missed that one badly. Really. Oh my gosh, yeah, okay, there is peach. Now that she says that, I smell the peach, but I sure smell florals. I smell a meadow in this, and maybe it's, I've never smelled Georgia peach from Flaming Candle Company. Maybe uh, maybe it has some of that peach tree fragrance as well, because I smell some natural uh, floral undertones as well. And so you had me fooled on that one. I love peach, and I didn't even pick that up. Well, I feel like a fool now, because I can definitely smell the peach now that uh, she's mentioned it but I would have been dead set that this was some type of wildflower meadow floral type fragrance. So I loved it either way. That probably explains why I loved it so much because I love peach. Anyways, great job overall. Had a lot of fun reviewing your candles. Thank you for sending them in to me. I appreciate uh, your trust for me to review these and give you some feedback here on the channel. If anyone else is interested in doing so, just let me know in the comment section. And if you are interested in seeing any other reviews on the channel, I have a playlist just covering all of these subscriber candle reviews. Thank you all for being here. Be sure to subscribe, like this video if you wouldn't mind, and I will see you all next time. Thanks.